Hi and welcome, I'm Tommy Host, and this is the Dropcast Movie Poster Podcast. This format is part of the Instagram blog Drop and you can find us under at DropMacOfficial. We do reviews, news, interviews that all have to do with the film business. And in this show, we're going to talk to the godfather and founder of the Poster Posse, Don Thompson, and his wife is maybe in the background, <laughs> Rebecca Thompson. And uh, yeah, he is the founder of the Poster Posse, as I said, and he's gonna, we're going to talk about the alternative movie poster scene and um, all the creative power that is behind uh, those passion projects and those projects that bring the digital art for big names like Disney, and uh, Netflix uh, to life and that people uh, enjoy when they scroll through Instagram, for example. So stay tuned and head over to our Instagram profile at Dropback Official to follow along with the art that we are talking about and check us out on YouTube for the video version. So now let's get started. I already had the chance to talk to one of your poster proxy pros, which is Eileen. SG posters also, and I talked to one of your guest artists, Freya Betts, and I interviewed her last week for uh, the episode that came before you guys, and now I finally get the chance to look behind the scene of what the cool art is all about. So welcome, Don. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on today, Tom. Yeah, thank you for thank you for um, this the valuable time. I mean, you're busy. You're a busy man because um, it's it's always like when I talk to artists, it's uh, most of the time very hard to get a hold of a lot of artists because they are uh, they they are not that affected of uh, the corona business because they work uh, most of the time from home and they can do the projects. So um, how how's that for you guys? It's the same, you know, um, we we are remote, so we can work anytime, anywhere. And it, which helps. I mean, you know, our artists are all over the world. So, you know, we have people, a guy in Japan, we have people in the Philippines, Australia, Turkey, all over the, Germany, as Germany, you said. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're pretty much answering questions, emails uh, all the time. So uh, to start, I usually pick three posters by the artist. But uh, this time, since I, you are an artist in a different way, and uh, that's not really working. And you do a lot of cool projects on the on the side. Uh, it is on Instagram. You can see those on, on your website, which is uh, postaposse.com, right? Yes. And um, yeah, so I picked three of your projects and uh, that I want to talk about. And the first project okay. I picked is the International Women's Day one, which, is, which was just uh, 20th of March or when, when did it come yep. out? Okay. Yeah. So this is our second one. We basically do, it's one of our passion projects. So when we're not working with clients, we do what we call poster posse passion projects. And these are a way for the artist to show off their talents and skills without the restrictions of a creative brief from a client. You know, a lot of times when we get stuff from clients, they'll say something like, well, you can't do likeness on this one person, or you have to have these two people in the same scene at the same time. This way we can just, I, I keep it very general. You know, if they want to do a landscape, they can do landscape. If they want to do horizontal, they can do horizontal. Muted colors, fine. Bright colors, fine. Just pick a woman that inspires, um, and you can do a poster for her. And we coincided with obviously the International Women's Day, and we also invite guest artists to come on board for this. Mm -hmm. So it it gives uh, people outside of our our little posse a chance to participate and have their work seen in a different light. What what is the difference between uh, being a poster posse pro, as you call it, and a poster posse guest artist? So a poster posse pro, we have a contract with. Mm -hmm. And for those people, those are the people that we are constantly seeking work for. Mm -hmm. So when a client mm -hmm. calls us, the pros are the ones that have a shot at getting, a, at getting part of that project. Mm -hmm. Guest artist is someone that just comes along from the outside of our group that's not under contract and, and plays with the same themes that we're playing with. Oh, okay. And um, is is it is it still are they freelancers then the post the, the pros or is is it yeah yeah the pros are basically okay. you know they're not exclusive with us mm -hmm. some of them work for other agencies um, some of them have their own jobs uh, but there's a lot of freelancers in the group but yeah so we try to make it as beneficial for the artists as possible mm -hmm. we don't really put any restrictions on them um, but those are the people that we're looking for work for. 
Okay, okay. Um, but they they they're not getting. How does it work with their pay? Is it is it? Do they give you the invoice, or are they gonna be just you're just a middleman, or? So basically, the client will hire us and say we need 20 posters for Toy Story 4. Mm -hmm. We'll say okay. Well, we have 55 artists. Here's here's 30 artists for you to look at, given the brief that you've given us. If you see, list off all the ones that you want. Um, and if you don't find enough, we'll send you another batch of 25. And then that way, the client picks the ones that they want, okay. and we agree on a fee, and we pay the artist. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. And how do you? Uh, how did this? Um... Like, who came up with the idea for this this project? Was it you or your wife in this case? <laughs> well, no, it was actually me. Uh, I used to work in the action sports industry. Mm -hmm. I worked for a footwear manufacturer, two of them. And when the economy crashed in 2008, mm -hmm. eight? I think it was eight, yeah. 2008, uh, I needed something else to do. So I started a pop culture blog. Mm -hmm. You know, I had nothing to do. I was a stay at home dad raising my son. Um, but I really got into the alternative movie poster scene. I was, I was really became an instant fan of what Mondo was doing. Mm -hmm. Galleries like Bottleneck Gallery, uh, Gallery 1988. So I started following different artists. Um, and it really happened generically. You know, I just, I saw the teaser poster for World War Z, mm -hmm. it was just a basically a black poster with a silver Z on it. Mm -hmm. It didn't really speak to me. I was so excited for the project, for the movie. Yeah. Um, it was Brad Pitt. It was zombies. I was like, we got to do something different. So I reached out to 12 artists and said, hey, would you guys like to do an alternative movie poster? I will post the whole gallery on my mm -hmm. blog and we'll go from there. Eight of them wrote back and said yes. I call those guys the original eight. <laughs> um, It's not the hateful and eight. We did eight. <laughs> yeah, right. We did a drop for that. And then about a week and a half later, the studio called and said, hey, we really love your posters. Is there any way we can buy them for our marketing campaign? Mm -hmm. I had no idea what I was doing. Like, I, I, I literally wasn't ready for that. You know, I just I was just a blogger doing pop culture stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but instinctually, I just said, yes, well, yeah, we'll absolutely sell them to you. No problem. So they said, "Okay, well, let us know what you need and we'll, let's talk uh, on Thursday. So. I immediately started calling all the artists and they're like, please tell me you said yes. And I said, I said yes. <laughs> and they said, okay, good, good. Uh, so basically the studio bought all the posters and then they used them on t-shirts through Hot Topic. They did, uh, they sold them on Amazon's exclusive limited edition posters. They did in theater giveaways mm -hmm. and we paid the artists and the artists were happy. And I, that's how it started. It was very organic. Um, We did enough, and that just one passion project led to the next. You know, I think we did Star Trek Into Darkness next. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we, and J.J. Abrams wrote a note to one of the guys saying, hey, love your work. And that was, okay, so great. Now a studio liked our work, and now J.J. Abrams likes one of the artists. Okay, what can we do now? And then we ended up doing World, uh, sorry, Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. And that's really when it, took hold because James Gunn saw the work, director James Gunn saw the work, oh, yeah. and he started retweeting all of it. I mean, he nice. was just relentless. He was retweeting it, and he was really being kind by tagging all the artists and tagging yeah. you know, our that's, group. That's almost that's also very hard. I saw the, was it, I think it was Matt Needle. Did, did Florence Pugh or somebody retweeted, uh, or Florence Pugh retweeted the art? No, this was Scott C. She got a present yeah. from a friend, the Scott C., um, uh, For Midsummer, so that was that was kind of cool to see that. I mean, yeah. I always love when when somebody acknowledges all the artists. That's why when I do the reviews for 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 my blog and stuff like that, I always try to find like an alternative movie poster, so not to take the yeah. regular one. And I always like tag the artists, so like to get them to to the people to see that there's more to it. And like because I um and one thing I also do uh, I also did what Aline's work was because uh, I host um at this uh, I host a sneak preview at the local uh, IMAX here. And okay. um, it's like it was when it was open, it was every Monday at 8.30. And I always do like a little news section. I do like three news elements and I always do one alternative movie poster and where to get it. So it's like so very to cool. inform the people and get, get them into uh, this kind of strange but very cool hobby. And like, and, 
That's great that you do that because, you know, a lot of artists might not have the fan base that others have. Yeah. And all it takes is a couple people sharing their stuff, and it start it can grow exponentially. You know, it it does. I try to tell my group, opportunity is everywhere. You know, you never know where it's going to come from. So, the fact that you're doing your part, you know, Eileen is great sharing people other people's work. Mm -hmm. I mean, all that adds up, and it makes a difference. It does, and it's it's all. I think that's uh, like this this I love this kind of community. I basically can uh, approach like Greg Ruth and have an interview interview with him for free. And uh, since he's such a great artist and I also can talk to you guys, yeah. you take the, the time out of your day to um, make this all possible. And that's that's what I love about this community, that everybody is so fond of each other and that they all work together. And that's, uh, you know, it's a it's good. a big global community, mm -hmm. but everybody kind of interconnects, like everybody knows everybody else's work. Uh, a lot of people are friendly with each other. It's fun going to gallery shows when galleries were open. Mm -hmm. It was fun to go up to Gallery 1988 and just see all the artists that would show up and talk to all the collectors and stuff. It, it's it's a really, it's a really great. Yeah, and it's, that's one of the bad things though. Nothing in Germany. Oh my God, I'm so I'm so Why sad is about that. I, I don't know. I I I, I had in last year in January, I had uh, I had a show with just my private art. I did at a friend's cafe. We closed it up for uh, one night, and I put like all the like the pop culture posters up. I had I have some sideshow collectibles as well, and I put those up. So that was kind of cool, and people came and they were really interested in, in all that stuff. And but sadly, there's 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 no other galleries that uh, that mm. do this kind of stuff that that is bigger than that. And I think Berlin is a very artsy place, and uh, yes, that's where I live. And um, yeah, I, before co Corona hit, I was um, in January, I was uh, starting to talk to uh, different like uh, um, kind of uh, uh, nonprofit galleries that, uh, that, that host sometimes work. And I found like a local library, they have some room where I could like do another show because yeah. I have like a way bigger collection now. And I found also this kind of art collective that uh, they want they want to do something in the future. But so, well, I guess we have to wait till Corona and all that stuff is over. And then I will try to push it a little bit more here. <laughs> yeah, Ger it, it, Mrs. Posse, her, one of her favorite places in the world is Germany. So oh, that's cool. um, yeah. you do it. Maybe we'll have to come over and visit. Yeah, you, you've been before or? She used to, so she also worked in action sports okay. and she was on the apparel manufacturing side. Okay. Okay. And one of their biggest clients lived in Germany. So uh, she had to go visit them and tubing, where was it? Tubing? Tubing. Tubing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah so she, she loves it over there. She, the food, everything. She loves yeah, it. Yeah. I bet. I mean, yeah. If, if uh, Corona ever is going to stop, uh, please come and visit. I, I'll gladly show you around here and we, we try to get something going. <laughs> Yeah, sounds good. Okay, um, so the the next one, uh, the next project I wanted to talk about is the uh, Mandalorian one, which is that was a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a big Mandalorian fan. I I I ordered from Sideshow. I ordered the the life size Baby Yoda, the child. Oh. I ordered the deluxe. I'm so jealous. I I ordered the deluxe Mandalorian with the child in a one six uh, uh, scale. So yeah, I'm, I'm I'm a big fan. You can say that. <laughs> yes, I'd say so. And yeah, how how did this happen? Okay, so the Mandalorian. <laughs> so the Mandalorian was great. So did you like the show? Disney by the called. Way? What's that? Did you like? I love the show. Yeah. I'm. I cannot wait for season two. Oh my god! Yeah, with with Ahsoka and Rex in there. Oh, my, and Maul. Yeah. I know. Oh I know. God. It's gonna be. It's. It's un I cannot wait. Yeah. I cannot wait. Yeah, yeah. I was crying um, when I heard the news. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and you just and, your jaw drops yeah, and, and you're like, Holy And season three is gonna happen as well. I mean, come on, we're set. I know. There's no way they're getting rid of that. Yeah. It's so popular, yeah. it's so well done. I love the way Favreau is bringing mm -hmm. other directors in. Um but it, it, it's a cohesive universe, yeah. you know, like the directors aren't too far off. You can mm -hmm. see their style within the, the episode, mm -hmm. but it's very it's very well done. So yeah. It's it's great Star Wars stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So Mandalorian was was okay. So Disney called and said, "Hey, could you guys come up? We'd like to talk to you guys about a project." Mm -hmm. We said, "Okay, great." So we walk in. We go to this huge meeting room. Is it's it just, just you, you and table. the missus. Me and the missus go up. We get in this massive conference room. There's 45 chairs around the table, like a 100 inch 
plasma screen TV up there. Uh -huh. I'm like, oh, this is going to be a good meeting. So we're sitting there, and two people walk in. And they say, look, we would love for you guys. To, we're about to launch Disney Plus streaming, and we would love for you guys to do something for The Mandalorian. So we're like so excited. We're like, yes, this is amazing. Thank you so much. And then they said, we're going to share everything we have with you for this project. And we said, great. We love assets. And he goes, except Baby Yoda, huh? No, nope. he just said, watch the trailer. And we're like, what? He goes, that's all we know. He goes, I don't even know what's in okay. the show. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so they really kept it tight. You know, uh -huh. uh, that's why there was no Baby Yoda in any of our posters. Yeah. Uh, we literally only had the very first trailer to go off of. Uh-huh. So um, we did the posters. They got approved. Uh, and then they came back and later and said, look, we're going to be launching Disney Plus in the UK and in Europe later this year. We'd like you guys to do an episodic nice. series of prints for that. So we did those. Those just finalized and just got released. Yeah. Um, they were all really cool. That, that's why there's, there's another plug. I, they, they're not on a website yet that, that I'm showing here. So um, check check out uh, the, the drop back official on Instagram. And you will find uh, the all the, the the pieces in there. I put them in the highlights. Yeah, yeah. So that was fun. You know, um, anytime we get to partner with Disney, they're so great. They really appreciate artists. Um, they're open to to ideas. We go back and forth with them. So um, yeah, it's a lot of fun working with them. And when it's something like this, like the Mandalorian, it's it's unbelievable. Yeah, that's that, it's a great project. I really love all the different ones. I think my favorite one is uh, the one uh, this one here. I, I show I'm showing it now to to everybody, and okay. we're gonna talk about it later, so you know which one oh, I'm talking okay. about. Okay. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, and the last one I wanted to talk about is a little bit different because I think I never um, uh, I never have done documentary posters, which is which which are really really cool. So. The uh, this is the Disney Nature Times poster posse penguins, uh, penguins release. So this yeah, they, they have some really cool art. How how did this happen? You know, it it was so you know every any time we get a call from a studio, it's exciting because we don't know what it can lead to, mm -hmm. um, and and usually when we get a call from Disney, we assume it's like a superhero or action or something like that. But when Disney Nature called, mm -hmm. it was very refreshing. It was totally something different. We hadn't done it before. Um, everybody in the posse, posse is obviously animal fans. So for them to give us an opportunity to work on something like that for one of the documentaries was was just wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, this. I mean, the, the turn are great. I, I like, really love the the uh, Sam uh, Delord one. That, that's a uh, that's a really really cool one. Um, yeah, you know, and again, we didn't. Obviously, it's it was challenging to come up with different things with only the trailer to go off, especially when it's just talking about penguins. But you know what? It kind of made our artists uh, have to think outside the box. Yeah, they uh, did. Um, I, I would hang, I yeah. would hang them up. I would hang them up if you print them. Yeah, they're cool. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's like one of the things. Like, I mean, I I, I have a lot of Star Wars posters, and um, I I try to change around uh, uh, um, from like every three to four months. I try to change around all the posters. I have like about twenty five sure. up in the house, and um, I I do I do like so this architecture phase because I I have a lot of prints from the Frank Lloyd Wright series. Um, yep, they did with spoke art. And and I also have like some landscape ones from uh, the 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 ones um, Pablo Oliveira does. Uh, he did for yeah. Neo Tokyo and the Blade Runner one. And yeah. I have this this one Spider Man also, which shows New York and like has like the glow in the dark feature. And so very cool. So I, I change them out from time to time to have like a different style. And I would also love to have more animals, but still movie related. That's 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 a that's a hard topic. It's, there's not a lot out there. I know. Speaking of Star Wars, I'm very envious of your collection and behind you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, um, it's one of those grails. I I have um, which you which you can't see, but I'm gonna show you later. I have a couple more Matt Ferguson ones over there, which are also very very cool. Yes, very good stuff. Okay. Um, Let's let's get let's uh, talk a little bit about you. I mean, we heard something um, where you're coming from, but um, yeah. w what did you study? How did this how did this all happen? How 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 did you become uh, the Godfather? <laughs> By the way, best best email address, and I love the the right hand as email address. Oh my god, come on! 
<laughs> great, yeah, great the choices. The together. Um, you know, I've just always been a pop culture fan, you know, whether it's comic books, movies. Um, I've just had an affinity towards that stuff and really had a passion for it. Um, and I just kind of stumbled into it. Like I said, when the economy crashed, I kind of just my friend who has a, a blog says, look, mm -hmm. you should do a blog. You love pop culture. Just do a blog. It's easy. And I did it. And the more I did it, the more I was intrigued to learn more and find out mm -hmm. more. And I, then I got into the alternative movie poster scene. And really, once I got into that community and meeting people, the very first artist I ever talked to was Tracy Ching. Um, mm -hmm. And she was fantastic. She was yeah. relatively new to the scene at that time. Yeah, a little shout out. She's going to be on in, I think, in our June release. I'm going to talk to her in early June, I think. She's such a great person and a great artist. I mean, she's so talented. Um, and so we started talking. We just set out, started off a friendship. And she was one of the original eight. She's a very, mm -hmm. actually, she's the very first poster posse member. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, once I started talking to all these different artists, I just really gravitated towards that community. Just really good people. And I was like, I, I want to do more for these people. Like their art is incredible. So I started poster posse and the whole, our, our DNA for poster posse is to provide opportunities for artists. Mm -hmm. And that's it, you know, but is, is there, is there a way that, um, did, did you, did you go to university or something that, that helped you prepare for the way or no, not at all. It just happened generically, you know, um, I'm always going on Behance and looking at people's art, and yeah. I'm always looking at gallery releases. That's, so I'm always following different kinds of art, and I just got lucky, you know. Yeah, that's that's I very really got lucky. That's very American dream, I'd say. <laughs> well, you know, and I learn a lot from our artists. Yeah. You know, Orlando Arisina uh, is a very tenured artist within our group. Yeah, Mexi Funk for the people that don't know. Yeah, Mexi Funk, and he's great. He's we could not be where we are today without his help. I mean. He's done massive campaigns for alcohol companies uh, or the New York Auto Show, but he's also done drops with us for our passion project. So he's been doing this for many years and has kind of helped us navigate through how mm -hmm. to how to how to work with some clients and stuff. And so I'm I'm still learning as we go. Okay. You know, my artist, I I'm very transparent with our artist. When we don't know the answer to something, we ask them questions and see if they've been through it before. Mm -hmm. um, try to make it a group effort. That's cool. Um I saw the other day on uh, Society of Illustrator um, th that they have these alcoholic beverage uh, illustrations from artists. Did you see that? I mean, where they have like I haven't seen it. they have like the drinks, like different drinks, like the pina colada, and then they have like they have a cool illustration of it, and then they put in uh, uh, they they also put in uh, the the recipe for the drinks they make. But it's their way. I like it. And I like it. It's like I think yeah, that's that's a cool thing, and I, maybe that could be a future a poster posse project with like beverages or food or something like that. that I, yeah, I would love that. Because uh, it's funny you say that. Because uh, Daniel Nash is a big one of the poster posse yeah. pros is a massive food guy and he's always posting food posters. So, you know, maybe they're onto something there. Yeah, I mean, um, the it, do you know the, the, the Food Guys by Mike Mitchell? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I see it in, like, in those collectors groups, they, they're always looking for, uh, for stuff they, uh, because they want to hang stuff in the kitchen and they always try right. to get the, all the, like, the, the little guys from uh, uh, Mike Mitchell. And uh, this yep. is like very funny, and like th th this, th th there could be something. I mean, I would love to have uh, something in the kitchen that is more food related, but also very pop culturey cool. So exactly, exactly. So yeah, um, maybe in the future then. <laughs> yeah, it's, I will have to keep them. That's a good one, actually. <laughs> I'll take ten percent. <laughs> yes. Oh, good. Because that's going to give you fifteen. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, no, never mind. I, I negotiate. I'm going to take uh, all the posters printed. Ha. Do that too. We can do that. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Since since my blog is a lot about uh, movie reviews and uh, TV reviews, I I want to talk about what is the last thing you saw. The last thing we saw. My son and I just watched season two of Jack Ryan on Amazon Prime. Oh yeah, that's right. You said you're a big Jack Ryan fan. Love Jack Ryan. Oh, and then we watched Extraction on. Oh yeah. Netflix. I think we shouldn't talk about that. <laughs> no, because very violent. And it, no, it, it is. Um, but um, I, I just put out the other day my review for it. I think it was um, yeah, it was like yesterday. I think it came out yesterday, and uh, I was a little bit disappointed with the movie. 
I mean, the, really? The, what, did, what didn't you like? I uh, I enjoyed the action. I have to say it was good. It was good action. But I get good action in John in the John Wick movies. I get it in the the Raid uh, yep. franchise, uh, mm -hmm. which I would say is even better than the the one I was I was uh, shown there. But the problem with the movie is. I'm not feeling for Chris Hemsworth. I love Chris Hemsworth for being Chris Hemsworth, but I don't love the character. Right. And that was like a okay. very much uh, uh, a letdown for me that there was basically no story and no um, no actions from the character that made his violent action more acceptable for me. Because when I have John Wick and the way he's like crumbling, uh, you know, it makes me feel for him and, and it makes this, uh, it balances out this, brutal yeah. action and i think that was missing yeah. from extraction so i kind of was i mean just just plain action i'm fine but uh, other well I'll talk more nah. i think netflix just announced that yeah. they're gonna do a, a see another one yeah so maybe you'll get what you want because the they, they're considering doing a prequel yeah i know but it's so maybe i hope find out. yeah i hope so <clears throat> but still a movie should have that working for it and i i don't need I, I shouldn't need a sequel i mean that's that's my critic my critic view so <laughs> sure no nope, that's totally fine you know my 14 year old and i loved it we had we love the action yeah we were cheering I, for chris Hemsworth the whole time so exactly. I, I, mean, I, I see what you're saying I, I did that too though i mean and, and i love the the one scene where they had the the almost like the one shot camera uh, thing where where he's fighting the 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 the, the assistant guy from the drug lord i, I don't yeah. I forgot his name but you know what i'm talking about yeah but yeah that was that was a very cool scene i'd say I also like that they're showing the behind the scenes right now. Yeah. Like I think they're showing, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of stuff on Netflix and YouTube mm -hmm. of the behind the scenes of the filming. Like when he throws the kid off the roof, yeah. that was really cool to see how they filmed that. Like I had no idea. Yeah, they, I mean, they, they did some some cool shots. I'd say that I got to give it to them, but uh, I think the story was lacking. So, And since Joe Russo was attached to that, I was like, mm, come on. I mean, yeah, well, but we'll see. We'll see. I'll give it okay, a chance. We'll see. I'll give well, it a I'll chance. Wait, I'll wait for the second one. We'll see what happens. Exactly. Okay. Um, so, and what what are some movies you're really looking forward to? Oh, there's two. Well, there's three movies. Okay. There's a whole bunch of movies. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Since we didn't go for a while. <laughs> right. I know. I know. Right. So, Matt Reeves, the Batman. The Batman. Yeah. Okay. Understandably. I put I put up uh, uh, the the poster you sent in. It's it's by Aline. I posted it already on on, on, on my blog uh, to, to feature that. It's a very cool poster. Um, but, but but what do you think about the car? The car's great. I think it's gritty. I think it's. Uh, I don't know. It's look. I love Nolan's Batman. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Tumblr and all that. I love it all. Mm -hmm. But. This looks like a more down-to-earth version of Batman. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I can't wait. I, I'm, I'm all in on that. I'm a big, huge Batman fan. Mm -hmm. um, so that one's one. Uh, I love everything Nolan does. So I'm looking forward to Tenant. Yeah, ten Tenant is. Um, do, did you send me one poster for that? No, you did not. Probably, huh? I don't. I, we don't have anything for Tenant. It's that's so right. That's right. It's just a regular one. And I think it's it's like really tough because like uh, he's still holding on to that July schedule, right? He wants to. He's yeah. trying his best. Uh, you know, and I know all the studios are scrambling to figure out an alternative way to release these things. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. I mean, yeah, he doesn't want to go for home release. He's gonna. He's rather gonna burn it. Yep. He's he's more of he wants the movie. He's. You know, he's a true filmmaker. He wants the film, the movie theater experience, you know? Maybe if... And he films on such a grand scale, like, I think it would be a shame to watch it yeah. the first time I mean, at home. I mean, Dunkirk, that's a movie for the cinema. You, I mean, it looks great in 4K on my OLED uh, TV, sure. TV. So, uh, and, uh, but in a cinema, oh my God, it was incredible. On an IMAX It's a screen. whole different immersive experience, you know? Yeah, exactly. And... Uh, and then let's see. Oh, and the last one I want to see is Dune, the, yeah, the new yeah. Dune. I think, yeah, I think everybody. I think everybody mentioned a Dune and Tenet when I talked to them lately because there really? was no movies coming out. I mean, Greg Ruth said basically the same thing. So, <laughs> I mean, I want to see the Green Knight. A twenty four has a movie called The Green yeah, yeah. Knight oh, coming my out. God. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm looking forward for that one as well. Uh, I think Dev Patel's in that. Yeah. It looks amazing. It does. Uh, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of things. Wonder Woman. I mean, that's going to be a fun movie, I think. Mm -hmm. You know. I put that. Um, I put that. By the way, the the Dune, the Dune one. Who who did that? That one's by Luke Butland. Okay. Um, He's also a pro. I heard. 
He is. Oh, um, Luke Butlin just did this recently. Actually, before we talked, I didn't have any Dune stuff, mm-hmm. and then he did this one, and I was like, I gotta, we gotta talk yep. about this. Before you, before I mean, you've wrote, you've wrote it down before. And, uh, <laughs> while I was like thinking, okay, there's no Dune stuff. Um, I'm gonna get the, the I'm gonna get SG posters Dune stuff. Because she did, yes. she did, she did actually too. So, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, hers are fantastic too. Yeah. I just love the way this is different. Luke's poster is different than his normal style. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm kind of looking at it on the screen as we talk yeah, here. Sure. So, um, it's different than his normal style. He's really kind of experimenting with during the quarantine. He's kind of doing different things, and he's really kind of found his groove, as he said. And he's. I hope to see more of this style mm-hmm. from him because it's really, really cool work. He just did that for, uh, or was it like, it was the gallery release? Probably they don't have licenses, huh? Or no, this one he just did for just for fun. Okay, or just a, like a like a yeah like a, 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 a like a tribute. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, he did a fan art tribute, and I just love the way it came out. And uh, mm-hmm. perfect. I would put it on my wall, actually. Yeah, it, it looks great. I, I yeah, in a frame, I, I would probably frame it. In a black frame, that would with like a yep. cool kind of uh, uh, poster mat like behind it. That would be yeah. Okay. No, it's really cool. All right. Um, okay. And what is your favorite movie? My favorite movie of all time has to be Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Why did you? Li- why do you like that so much? That was my first big boy movie. Like <laughs> okay. I can remember being a kid. My dad took me to the movie theater. I can still remember walking down the aisle holding his hand. Mm-hmm. We got He got the aisle seat. I got the next one. And we just, as soon as it started, I was in awe. You know, keep in mind, my first big boy movie, I, before that I was watching, you know, cartoons and, and Saturday morning, you know, mm-hmm. Captain Kangaroo and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So this is the first real movie that I walked into, and it just – opened my mind to like the possibilities of of space and and film to be honest with you i was just like whoa like why have Mm -hmm. i been watching cartoons like this is incredible how old were you oh uh, Oh, should we should should we (laughs) tell should we tell (laughs) yeah i was very young i'm 54 (laughs) now so um i don't know i was really young and it just really made an impression on me Mm, okay that's carried through my life you know i'm i'm a big fan of uh all that all that ain't ancient alien stuff that's on TV and um, the questions of is there stuff out there and it just fascinates me. The space is so incredible and I really, really think that that movie should never be remade. It's perfect <laughs> the way it is. Like just leave it alone. Okay. Um, I, I pulled up the original poster. And, okay. Uh, how, it's the one with the uh, with the uh, uh, where you can see the stars and have like close encounters of the first kind, close encounters of the second kind, close encounter of the third kind, and then it has like the highway in there and then the title, close encounter of the third kind. Yeah. Is that uh, how how do you like that poster? Would would you? I do like the poster. It kind of when I you know when I look at the poster then and now mm-hmm. it kind of makes you wonder what's over that horizon what's causing that light it's obviously something substantial because it's filling up most of the background there mm-hmm. like i want to get i want to get there i want to get over that horizon and see what it is and i think the poster is absolutely perfect okay and uh, you also gave me the uh, christopher shy uh, version of close oh. encounters w- which one do you like better <laughs> okay I would have a look. I love everything Christopher Shy does. You should definitely get him on this podcast. All right. Yeah. I did. He I, is a, you, you put me on to him. I will check him out. I did not know him before. Go look at his work. He's just, his work is mesmerizing. Like, I can't take my eyes off his work. It's very dark, very gloomy. Um, I would say the original, just because I think sometimes less is more. Mm hmm. Like, you know, they they also have the official poster that shows the mothership over the mountain. Yeah. Over Devil's Devil's Dome there. Um, I, I, I would I like the wondering what's on the other side of that hill because your imagination can race. That's why reading a book is better. Theater of the mind is always mm-hmm. better. Um, so I like the less is more, but I would hang Christopher Shy. Oh. Anything Christopher Shy does, I would hang in my office. Come on. I, 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 here, there you go. Since you said it, I, I pulled it up while we were talking. And I followed him, of course. <laughs> Christopher Shy yes. Studio. So that's a shout out already. <laughs> and yeah, look, yes. look at this. I mean, I love this Mandalorian he did. I mean, I'm, I'm on Instagram yeah. right now, seeing like all those little ones. Oh yeah. 
That's some really cool He's stuff. He's easily one of my favorite art. He's easily one of my favorite artists. So why is he not a posse pro? <laughs> I, you know what? He's a very busy man. He's, uh, you know what? I would love to have him work with us, but he's so busy, mm -hmm. and uh, it's. I don't think it would ever happen. <laughs> well, fingers crossed. Knock on wood. <laughs> All righty. Um, very good choice. I mean, that, that, thank you for uh, uh, putting me on him for that. And would you yeah. ever decide to do it like a passion project or like a project for close encounters with with the posses? With the posse, you know, I so with the passion projects, what it is is you know we we lay them out for the entire year for the group, so they have plenty of time to pick the ones they want and the okay. ones they don't want. Um, so like usually in December I'll say okay here's next year's list of passion projects and they'll like okay great no no nah, whatever. Mm -hmm. We don't make it. The passion projects are not mandatory. Mm -hmm. We ask that everybody does at least one to two a year, but. We only want people doing ones that really, the theme speaks to them, yeah, you it. know? Mm -hmm. um, so as passionate as I am about that film, and I know there are others in our group, I, Scott Hopko has done a great print for that mm -hmm. movie, um, mm -hmm. Hopko Designs. Um, for as passionate as I am about the film, I don't know if that would carry over to the entire group. Okay, I understand. But you know what? I think that, you know, now that you say that, it would be a good one. And then we could always invite guest artists to participate as well because mm -hmm. I love seeing mm -hmm. other people's takes on these things. Um, yeah. Okay. I think we'll There's have to write that idea. I'll take Prince as well. <laughs> okay. You can have Prince on that one as well. <laughs> okay. Um, I, um, uh, 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 no, I forgot what I wanted to say, but it was about the, the, the art um, and the, the project. And is, is, there, is there a chance in, in the future um, when, you, when you do like those, those uh, kind of projects that, um, mm -hmm. that, that there will be prints since we're talking prints already? Because like most of the time you just do digital art. Right. So the problem with that is, is that, you know, we work with the majority of the studios in Hollywood right now on official projects. Mm -hmm. We don't ever want to release anything that's unlicensed because we don't want to offend the people that are hiring us to do official things. Obviously. Um, which is painful because we get a lot of people, after we release our passion projects, people always email and write to us and say, hey, can I get that? Where can I buy it? And it, it hurts to tell someone, no, you, thank you for liking the art, but unfortunately we don't have the license. But we are trying to work on some stuff with a potential uh, partner where we may be able to release some stuff in the future. Mm, okay. So how, how is, yeah, like, I'm, I'm all for it. Um, yeah, me too. How is that, how is that working out? I mean, since you of officially work on that and do the digital art for that, why, uh, why can't, is, is there a different license holder? Let's say like, so yeah, Lucas there is actually. Okay. So, uh, you know, they're hiring us to do either, like say their digital marketing campaign. Mm -hmm. So basically we'll come up and we'll create 15 posters for their digital marketing campaign. It's very specific. Okay. Um, to sell it, you then have to go to the license E. Mm -hmm. So like say, like Bottleneck has a Marvel license mm -hmm. that they use with Grey Matter Art. They share it with Grey Matter Art. Mm -hmm. If it was a Marvel mm -hmm. property, it would have to go through them. Okay. If they even wanted it, sometimes you know there, there's they it, once it's been out there, they're like, no, you know, we've got some other stuff in the works, and you know, with bottleneck and gray matter, they're so far ahead of the schedule, like they already have all their posters lined up the, mm. for the next year mm. or so. So for us to come in at the end and say, hey, by the way, we just did this for digital marketing. Would you like to sell it? Some, you know, okay. it hasn't had an okay. opportunity yet. That's all. I see, I see. Because, because I, because I was wondering. I mean, since you actually talk to like Disney and stuff, and right, that that there's no licensing. It's a, it's a crazy, yeah, they, crazy way. Once they, once they hire us for their digital marketing campaign, they own the rights to the art. So the artists will get paid. Okay. Now the good thing is, is that even though they own the rights and they can do whatever they want with it, mm -hmm. when other mm -hmm. opportunities arise, they've been great by coming back to us and say, hey, mm -hmm. we know this was digital mm -hmm. marketing only but home entertainment would like to use it on the package of the DVD. Can we do that? Like the Spider-Man so Spider yeah. stuff, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we say yes. And they say, okay, you guys can do a contract with home entertainment and now they'll pay you for that part. Oh, so okay. it does, it can move around. And they, like I said, they've been very kind because I mean, they do own the rights to it. Yeah. Um, 
Just speaking of home releases, I saw today um, that Matt Ferguson releases or, or showed this. Uh, it wasn't a release yet, but he showed his Flash Gordon 4K yeah. anniversary stuff. Did you see that? Oh, yeah, my it's God. pretty impressive. That's, that was, oh my God, that looks so good. I can't wait. Yeah, I think you want to just go buy it just so you can have the art. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, let's. Yeah, it's very, very but I think I, I, Vice Press is saying there's something coming. So maybe there will be a print. Get ready, because I'm sure there is going to be a yeah, print. I think and so no, he, his, his stuff is so impressive. I, we love Ferguson. He does a great job with his stuff. Yep. Okay. Um, since we're already in the poster game, uh, what are your three favorite posters right now, which are like really oh. fired to you? I mean, I think we talked about a couple already. <laughs> yeah, we did. So Eileen's Batman poster. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put that SG up. SG posters again. Did her Batman 21, 2021 poster. I really love the grittiness of it. Mm -hmm. um, I love that she hid cats all through it. Yeah. Uh, That's like the first time she it, could do the cats because she's she has a cat, but was I think Blinky it's called. Yeah. So that's cool. That poster makes me just really want to see the movie even more. Mm -hmm. um, we just did a passion project for the movie Hansel. Uh, oh, yes. Gretel and Hansel. Yes, I love and that one. I, I just pulled it up. This... Um, this is so great. I saw a bunch of them on Instagram, but I didn't see everything. And I, I think I've missed this one. And this one is freaking great. I love this one. Yeah, this one's the, but one of our new poster posse members, uh, Attila Zarka. He's from Turkey, right? right? Yeah, I uh, know. He's from, Where? oh gosh, Poland. No, I don't know. He's, yeah, Hungary. Hungary, Hungary I think. Okay. Um, he's a new artist for us. He's... You got it. If you like his poster, go to his Instagram feed yeah, I'll check and out. watch his process video of how he made that poster. It's just insane to watch. It's, is he? It's, he's drawing like digitally drawing or all okay. illustration? Yeah. Okay, that's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, since I there's like there's a, like a difference. I talked to many so so many different artists right now. Um, like yeah. in, in in the previous stuff when when I talked to Scott Suslow and Eileen who do like the compositions and all of that, which mm -hmm. is pretty cool. And then I talked to Greg Roos, who's like the pencil master yeah. and dry brush God. And uh, then I talked to Freya uh, Betts who, who does all this digital drawing, which is crazy. It's like, it's like, it's so interesting to see how the people come up with those concepts and like realize them in this, in those ways. And this is all this, the, the Hansel and Gretel one is also a very good um, poster for that. It's really dark and just re it gives me an une uneasy feeling looking at it, which makes me love it even did, more. Did you I watch mean, the Did you watch the movie? I haven't seen it. <laughs> I want to. You know, it's only it's on, on video on demand right now. Yeah, I'm probably yeah. gonna have to watch it. Okay. Yeah. Did you watch it? Yeah, I watched it. You want me to review? I'm not. <laughs> did you like it? Um, I liked it. I expected something different, but I liked it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so that poster, I just, I don't know. I, even without seeing the movie, it just, it gives me the creeps and it makes me want to watch the movie. Did you watch so. his, his uh, other one, The Witch? Yes. That was, yeah. Oh, was it Robert very, very Do I mix something up here? I'm not sure right now. I've seen The Witch. Yeah, yeah, but I, this is by Robert Eggers. Eggers, Eggers yeah. Yeah. But did he did he do Han uh, Gretel and Hansel? Yeah. Or was it Ari Aster and I mixed that up? No, no, it's not. Yeah, you did. Ari, no, Ari Arsa did uh, Hered. Wait, now I want to look it up, and I don't have my computer. <laughs> <laughs> hold up, hold up. I'll, I'll, I'll do it for you. We go, we gonna find. You that. do the, you do the, you do the lifting here. Yeah, yeah. Gretel. I and... think you got something. I think you got it mixed up here. I think so too. It is by. Directed by Oz Perkins. Yeah, yeah. You're right. I, I yes. mix it up. I mix it up. But okay, my bad. But yes, we are. It's all right. Hey, happens. It is what it is. Happens to the best. <laughs> So uh, let's see the other the other poster I really like. I'm still you know a while back we did a tribute to the Iron oh Giant. My God, yes, I, I did not know that poster existed and it's really really cool. I love the one. Um, is it Matt Griffin did, or yeah, I think it's, his name is Matt Griffin. He did like the yeah. the where he, where all the trees are and then he does this uh, in, in this like blue, like orange reddish color. It was like really cool. It was released by Bottleneck, I think. And that's like, yeah, it was also really yeah. cool. Yeah. And this one. Yeah, this one's by Adam Stothard. Mm -hmm. um, I just love the way it looks. He did also a black and white version, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, but this one, it's just, I don't know. It's just something about the colors yes. and the yeah. composition. It's mm -hmm. just real. I would love to frame this and get this in the house. Exactly. Because, yeah. uh, 
if you get this one very... make another copy <laughs> i will make two, i will make two copies yes <laughs> perfect okay and then you had a last one also um by also by luke butlin we talked about and he did yeah he's doing a whole he's doing a, his own passion project he's watching that series on amazon prime called tales from the loop yeah it's actually a kind of good tv show I'd say it's I different, it. right? I liked it. Yeah, I like this uh, that it's not uh, too challenging in, in a way. It's more for this already stressed out times. You just watch it. It looks good and it has a cool idea and story behind it. And uh, yeah, I liked it. Yeah. So he's doing an episodic poster for each episode. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love where he started off with it. Uh, I can't wait to see what he does next. He just released another one the other day that came out really well, too. So. Yeah, so um, what yeah. do you know it's Instagram so people can yeah people check out Luke Butlin definitely you will Luke find Butlin him. is yeah he is L S T underscore mind M I N D okay perfect the good good that we had that, that if, uh, like sometimes it's easy when they just do their name but yes yes I know <laughs> but right? it's not no. easy when they do it in German like yesterday huh no <laughs> no 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 Gesundheit I couldn't spell it if you paid me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I understand. I understand. German language is But hard. your English is excellent. So you've mastered two languages now. I, I used to live in the States. I mean, if you if you grow up and like live in a different country for a year, uh, you pick it up. And, but thank you, by the way. <laughs> I mean, we had in school, I, I, uh, I used to learn Russian in school also for four years. Four years of Russian. So yeah. you're semi-fluent in russian yeah it's, let's say it's, let's say basics i forgot a lot because it was hard and i i it was like since since the letter letters are uh, uh totally different and i didn't it, it didn't was it wasn't that easy as english i mean when i was in school i didn't have to learn the vocabulary yeah. but with russian i should have so i'm just with the okay. basics <laughs> yeah okay and that's I had, all right that's I had still impressive spanish 101 in high school <laughs> Look at you. And Latin. Multilinguist. Latin and university. So. <laughs> Whoa. My brother took Latin. He said it was very challenging. Yeah, it, it was. I, but I had to take it because I had, because if I had, like, we, we had to, to in, in, in seventh grade, I could decide whether to do um, Russian or French. And since I'm from East Germany and I, my, my parents grew up all with, Rus uh, with Russian in, in, in school and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, uh, my dad told me, yeah, yeah, the future. Russian is going to be an important language, so do that. And so I was like, oh, yeah, I believe what my dad is saying. So I did Russian. And sure. So, but, but you have to, like, you have, uh, you have, to have Roman languages in, or, or that, are, that are related to Latin as well um, in, okay. when, when you want to become a teacher. And so yeah. I didn't have that, so I had to take Latin, like, a, like the, that's Kleine Latinum in German, the, like the, like the, like only three years of uh, worth of Latin, I think that's it. That is, and um, that's still a lot of Latin. It is, it is. But I mean, I I see where stuff comes from, but right. I mean, you, you don't speak it. You don't speak it. But yeah. No. So yeah, that, that was uh, interesting though. But yeah, this, that's how that's how I uh, uh, got in contact with uh, all the languages, and I'm learning okay. and I'm learning Farsi right now. Why are you learning Farsi now? Uh, my girlfriend, she's from Iran. Wow, so, yeah. that's incredible. Yeah. So, how challenging is that? Uh, that's very challenging, but it's because it's like totally different. I can, I, I can relate a couple things because um, yeah. I, there used to be a, 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 like a French colony, or like some parts of Iran, and they have, for example, to say thank you. They say merci. which is right. like the French, you know. And uh, so, right. so sometimes I, I understand like a little bits. But uh, I already like I always try to like uh, that she teaches me a word like every night so I can like okay. learn something uh, along. What's the, way. the latest word you learned? Uh, the latest one was um, salamati. Salam salamati. Salamati is when you like like cheers. Okay. So now salamati. <laughs> exactly, it's a good word. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, and it's a cool language, and it's um, and there's a lot of uh, there's a big Iranian c uh, community around the world. I just watched uh, Little America, which was on Apple TV, and they had an episode of uh, uh, Iranian uh, Iranian immigrants, and that was very interesting. Interesting. Okay. All right. Um, sorry, we went down this whole rabbit hole of languages exactly. and stuff. We got <laughs> off posters and art. Sorry about that. <laughs> Don't worry, it's fine. It's fine. I'll, I, I mean, it's something different for me as well. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, uh, so let's go back to our posters. Um, 
I was wondering, since we already talked about yeah. printing stuff, uh, what is your opinion on the galleries? Because I have some uh, some artists I spoke to before and I talked on Instagram. They have mixed feelings about galleries, especially di digital artists. So galleries, are, uh, you know what? I love the gallery experience. Mm -hmm. When there is an opening at a gallery, say I go up to uh, Gallery 1988, I love walking through the doors, feeling the energy mm -hmm. of the crowd. Like I said, everybody recognizes each other or knows each other. Mm -hmm. It's fun yeah. to go through and look at all the different art uh, and listen to, and talk to other people and see what they see, you know, how mm -hmm. how it affects them. And it must be especially, I mean, since I get only like the prints, like they send it home to me and I see them in person. I mean, you have to you have to see a lot of prints in person. They, they look way yeah. better in person than they could ever digitally. And that's also yeah. very cool that you have the uh, opportunity, opportunity to do that. Yeah, no, it's really great. You get, it, they do make a big difference in person. You know, I'm looking, I have three prints by Orlando Aracena up here, the Iron Man trilogy, mm -hmm. and they're on silver foil. Yeah. And I could take it down and show it to you, but it wouldn't even come close to how brilliant exactly, they are yeah. in person. I, I know. I, I have a Raid uh, 71 uh, Knights of the Old Republic. The, 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 oh, that's on that, the game, paper, which is right? on the, with, no, which is on the holo foil. They printed on a silver foil yes. as well, and it, it's so so good. And also the the Tracy Ching one I have, uh, Spirited Away. She did for very, the very Roxy difficult. version, yeah. And that's like uh, they, uh, sometimes the use of this kind of holo foil is just great. What they do with that, it does. It enhances the art. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing about galleries I like too is some, a lot of times the artist will show up. So like if it's it's Tom Whalen mm -hmm. and Dave Perillo. Oh, will go yeah. to Gallery 1988 for their show, mm -hmm. and they're sitting there talking to you, and you go, hey, this poster's great. I love how you incorporated this. And he's like, oh, you know, that was an afterthought or whatever. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's great to sit there and talk, and those two artists are fantastic. They're so nice to talk to, and um, it's it's cool to sit there and look at their art mm -hmm. with them. Yeah, I, I, I bet. I mean, that, that's why I'm doing this, like to get to know the artists and uh, um that, that that tell like the world so i i can share this with others and that's, right. that's a great thing to to have that feeling no so so from that perspective i love galleries you know i do hear from artists pros and cons mm -hmm. you know so um i don't know how i would feel coming at it from an artist i guess you know as, as an artist you want your work to be seen mm -hmm. you want it to be available for people to get um and I would imagine there's an immense amount of satisfaction walking into a gallery and seeing people looking at your work, looking over and they're buying your work. Mm. That must be incredible. Yeah, I, um, I remember I had I had um, two experiences being actually in a gallery. One, okay. one was, uh, there was both, both times was when I was in New York uh, last year in summer. Uh, I went to Bottleneck, of course, and they just had the Gaps, uh, um, his first solo show, I think it was. And so good, which was really cool. I, I, uh, I didn't get to participate in the opening. And so all the art was gone already and you could only get it yeah. online. And I already got something online and I was like looking around a bottleneck and they were all busy and we talked a little bit and so on. And, um, uh, when I was about to leave, um, one of the guys comes up to me and like says, here, here, that's for you. And they hand me a tube. So. I took the I took the tube and I was like I was going to the to the park down there and I was like I, I want to open I want to open it and I know and I, I, I sat down and I opened it and I was like they gave me a John Wick print for free that wow. that comes along with the that that was for the for the screening of the uh, the John Wick uh, show that was uh, with, with from from Gabs and now so this like this is one of the experiences I had and it was like really really good, cool that they were so nice and they were doing this that yeah. they didn't have to do that and I was like felt really really special. <laughs> like a young boy. That's great that they did that, though. And, yeah. You know, that stuff goes a long way. It does. And, you know, um, and it's it, it's interesting. You know, there, like I said, opportunities everywhere. Everybody that approaches you, you should talk to. Exactly. Talk to them. You don't know where they're from. You, you, you're you all the way from Germany. You're in Bottleneck Gallery. Yeah. Yep. Because of you, you like what they do and you love that artist. Gabs is easily one of our favorite artists. I mean, yeah. I would love to go to one of his shows. Yeah. I, I, so I, it's nice that they did that. I try to get, uh, I try to get him. He lives, just lives 500 kilometers away or, or was it even less. Or I think around about 500. It's like, yeah, it's not that far. Not that far. Is he going to do it? 
Uh, yeah, he he wants to, but uh, he was uh, we we were trying to do something uh, last year, but uh, he was like busy and he became a father father and uh, that that got in the way a little bit, and then now Corona, but a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you must not have kids. It gets I, in the way a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I bet. I mean, he was it was not uh, the kid was not born when we started talking, so he just okay. told me it, it's going to be born, so. <laughs> He, he won't have time yeah. Then, so yeah yeah it's 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 an immense that talk about a creative process holy cow yeah so uh, that was cool yeah. and i also went to the frank lloyd wright thing where i bought like Ooh. five or six uh, 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 uh prints and uh, uh it was very cool uh ken um hashimoto was there he I, he owns the gallery there the hashimoto gallery where it was held and he's part yeah. of spoke art so yeah I, I talked to him that was kind of nice to also to talk to him and um yeah see all the art and let the, the people i was like i was like um they had, they had a press opening before and was the the only show where they the, the, or the first show where they sold uh prints and I was okay. like one of the first guys that showed up and had like my tube and stuff. And it's like <laughs> that I just bought. Ready to go. I was ready to go. And I was like, yeah, because because I, I don't know how these things work, because I see sometimes like the, the galleries when when like when it comes to Mondo, for example, and the, when they have a show, people line up the night before. And it's like, oh, my God, they line up the week before sometimes exactly. like for the really big shows. Yeah, exactly. Will they I get something? chairs and it's crazy. It's like it's like the sneaker business. It, it's, it's sometimes yep. it's, it starts to get out of hand. Yeah, it's one of those, I, I don't want to say it's niche, but I mean, like like you said, the poster industry is is has its own its own way of doing things. Like sneakerheads, you said sneakers. Like there's all different kinds of things. Like we just got our old um, huge console mm -hmm. German radio record player yeah. fixed from like 1940s or 50s. Uh -huh. And I mean, there's a whole community based off old radio players and record. Yeah. It, it's amazing all the different communities there are. Yeah, I was like, um, because like I used to, I used to work at uh, uh, like a local sneaker store here in, in Berlin mm -hmm. when I when I was started studying and when I when I first came here to Berlin. So I collected sneakers as well, and I graduated to yes. to posters now. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Do you still have any of your old sneakers? I do. They're still. I I used to have like around fifty to sixty pairs, and I sold a couple for retail because I was working yep. and I could get them easily. Yeah. And um, but yeah, I, I used to. I, I think there's still thirty, around thirty. I still have left. Good for you. Yeah. It, yeah. I've, saw, I've I used to collect sneakers as well, and uh, I too have sold off almost all of mine. So, you know, yeah. why not? It is. I got posters. I have like you. I have posters exactly. now. So it's the grown-up collecting. <laughs> yeah. Because like you know, you know like, uh, people know that I'm a teacher, and uh, I, I I see my kids. They uh, like the the, the the like the older ones. They they take part in raffles, and they wanna they they, they still yep. wait in line, want to have the new Yeezys or whatever. And it's like crazy. Yeah. So it's like okay, yeah, I'm done with this, and yeah. What age group are the kids you teach? Uh, this everything between 12 and 18 19 plus okay oh that's a big range right there yeah it's like from seventh to seventh grade till uh 13th grade we have 13th grade yep. here so yeah okay okay and um so speaking of collecting you, you collect as well or how how's that would you i do you know i have we have a flat file here a lot of it holds our official work but mm -hmm. i also there's a lot like you said gabs and I like Nico Delore. Mm -hmm. uh, I collect his stuff. Tom Whalen. Um, uh, yeah, I, I definitely collect. <laughs> okay. Bro. How how big is the collection? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Ten drawers are full of the flat file. Okay. And they're full. I I really need to start weeding it out because <laughs> uh, the goal the goal during quarantine is to get more stuff up on the walls. Okay. Perfect. That that's a good goal always. Um, Speaking of uh, putting stuff up, what is the last piece yeah. of art you put up? Oh, um, the last one we did was from our Mandalorian project. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's a print by Chris Skinner. Yeah, and it was done for Disney. So what we did is, as a thank you, we got metal print. We had the prints made onto metal, mm -hmm. and we sent them to the executives that we worked with at Disney. Mm -hmm. And we made an extra one, so we had an extra one at the end, and we put it up on our wall. We just we just put it up, actually. Oh, that's cool. I mean, yeah, I, I just pulled it up for everybody to see. I mean, that's a that's a cool print. I I definitely would put up one of one as well. So, 
Do I need to send another one of those too? Yeah, 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 yeah. But you, okay. don't do the okay. don't do the metal one. It's gonna to be too heavy, and the the shipping is gonna cost heavy. a lot. But a print one, I take. Hard to get in the tube. Exactly. Metal like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just imagine it in my head when you like would like actually use something to roll it, and then I would have roll to it. unroll pull it. Pull it out. You're like, how am I gonna hang this? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's ruined. No. But yeah, that's cool. Where where did it go in the house? Does it have a special place? It's right as you walk in. It's in the entryway. Okay. Uh, there's no way you can't see it. it yeah. It's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, um, I want to I wanna talk about now, I mean, we, we talked about lots of stuff, but I want to talk about yeah. more about uh, the way uh, you at the Postal Posse work, especially your role in, in the work. Um, what are you working on right now? Is it a special project that is still under wraps? Or... Yeah, you know, the stuff, so we were working on a whole bunch of stuff for the studios. We had a dozen or so projects lined up, but as soon as the, you know, the lockdown happened, they just put everything on hold. And, you know, the good thing is, is that they're going to come back to it, mm -hmm. but everything's on hold right now. So um, we do have a couple of projects going on right now. Unfortunately, I can't talk about them, mm -hmm. um, but we are doing some stuff for other people. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also are going to have some, now that we have more time, obviously, we're going to be doing some more passion projects. Mm -hmm. What's the, can you talk about the next passion project? Mm, I really shouldn't. Could you tease it? People, Could you tease it? it uh, it's going to be good. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it's going to have guest artists. Okay. Uh, can you, can you... Well, and that's the other thing, too. So, like, when I plan these passion projects... It's based, a lot of it, if it's based off a film, is based off of release dates. Mm -hmm. Well, now all the release dates are changing. Mm -hmm. So now I'm having to shuffle the entire schedule around. Yeah. So right now it's a little bit fluid. So I'm not trying to be evasive by answering you, but I have to, I've had to I, move a bunch of dates around. I understand. I understand. Don't worry. Um, what I heard that it's going to be like the Protégé Project. I'm, I'm, uh, um, yeah. I'm, I'm very cool with uh, James Hobson. I heard he got in. Uh, what is the yeah what is, James? In fact, I talked to James yesterday. He was yeah, one of the exactly. people that we talked to during Let's Talk. Yeah. Really great guy. He's another super positive person. Really talented. Um, so you know, with our whole wanting to give artists opportunities, uh, our mission statement. You know, we were thinking, what can we do? What can, it, like we're obviously providing opportunities for people within our group. Mm -hmm. You know, we're letting them work with these big. We're helping them work with big studios and do official projects, but what can we do for other artists, you know, mm -hmm. outside of our group? And that's when, you know, Mrs. Posse and SG Posters came up with the idea for Poster Posse Protégés. Mm -hmm. And basically what would happen is people would submit their portfolios and we would take anywhere from five to 10 people and give them a, like a mentorship. Mm -hmm. So basically we, we chose for this first group, we chose 10 people, men and women from all over the world. And what's going to happen is we have how many poster posses are pros are going to be so between three to five poster posse pros will work with these people mm -hmm. like with one each or, or uh, wait, wait. no they'll they'll basically work with all okay, of them okay. mm -hmm. so they'll get their views on their art mm -hmm. their ideas they'll be able to pick those people's brains like hey how did you mm -hmm. break into the scene like what do you see the most important social media platform for you you know i'm trying so we're going to let these people work together and then they're also going to be able to participate in one of our upcoming passion projects. Okay, cool. And we'll give them the exposure from that and hopefully give them some information along the way that they find useful. Okay, is it is it going to be like a like an upgrade version? Like if you are a protege for a certain time, you're going to become a pro? It doesn't mean you're going to become a pro. It just means that we want to help you answer some questions. It's, it's, you know, when you're first starting out, there's a lot of questions. And you should ask mm -hmm. Tracy Ching about this. You know, she... Yeah. Being a woman in the pop culture scene was was not easy at the very beginning. That's what, that's why I always she had a lot of challenges. I always try to like uh, you, you kind of messed this up because I thought Rebecca is going to be on as well, and uh, <laughs> because I try always try to alternate like when I do the interviews between a, a male and a female person. So <laughs> yeah. No, so yeah, so a lot of people have questions and they really don't know where to get these answers. So, I mean, we still have questions. We just turned mm -hmm. to Mexi Funk because he pretty much has a, a vast knowledge of things for us. But mm -hmm. um, the, the other members of the pro, uh, posse have been very helpful in helping us answer some questions and, and you know, knock around some ideas. So mm -hmm. it's a good way for these mm -hmm. beginners or even if they're not beginners, if they have 
anything they would like help with or, you know, try to try to improve on something, we can try and help with them. Okay, that sounds very good. Is, is, um, is there going to be like a university style that every year at some certain point of time, you're going to take some protégés or how, how does it work? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mrs. Posse is going to chime in, but you're just going to hear a disembodied voice yeah, from the, from yeah. the, the background. You don't have to. Rebecca, you can decide for yourself. Wait if you a want minute. To come I'm in. a little shy. There you go. <laughs> Hello, Rebecca. How are you? Hello. The right hand. The right hand. The right hand. <laughs> that was your left hand, by the way. Well. Anyhow, go ahead. I'm tell just them. Just waving. Um, so yeah, there, each session is eight weeks long, mm -hmm. and we'll have ten, maybe a dozen um, proteges, and then three to five poster posse pros that participate. Um, we're gonna have a private Facebook group so everybody can talk and post mm -hmm. stuff and ask for feedback and advice. And um, we kind of have like some bullet points of different things that we're gonna talk about specifically, um, do some portfolio reviews, talk about social media, um, talk about- Contracts. Contracts, <laughs> a, a lot, some legalese stuff. Um, and participate in one of our passion projects where we'll, you know, our pros will kind of be able to critique and help, you know, mm. kind of follow that process as they create that piece. Um, what else? We're going to talk some too about how um, some of the mental challenges with being freelance. A lot, you know, most artists work in a studio at home by Secluded. themselves. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of seclusion. Um, you know, sometimes it's not so easy to sort of get out of your own head. Um, and so, and we're trying to kind of facilitate different things, especially with the, when the quarantine started, we started a Facebook group called Poster Posse Party uh -huh. that's open to any creatives. Um, and it was just kind of a way to like get everybody together and talking yeah. and communicating with, you know, with other people. Okay, that's that's a very cool opportunity, I'd say for a lot of people out there. So um, uh, yeah. good luck on that uh, going into the future. And that uh, I hope there's going to come a lot of uh, baby, baby poster posse pros out of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to be doing multiple. So this is the first one. Uh, the plan is to do other ones. I don't know how yeah. soon we'll do them, mm -hmm. like if it'll be two a year or whatever, but we are going to continue with it. Sounds very good. Okay. Um, what, what is your general approach on all of your projects? Um, is, is there going to be a difference on how approaching passion projects and uh, the, the client projects? Thank you, Rebecca. Um, so the passion projects, like I said, are very general. I just put out a theme. I'll say something. I'll say John Wick. Mm -hmm. And they go, okay, what? And I'll say anything associated with John Wick. If you want to do a poster of his dog, mm -hmm. his car, his weapon collection, yeah, anything. It just has to tie back to John Wick. Mm -hmm. And that's it. I don't say anything about color, style, uh, orientation, horizontal or mm -hmm. uh, vertical. Mm -hmm. I let them just run with it. Um, and it's a good way for them to test out new styles that they want to work, they're yeah. working on new brushes, anything that, that they're working on on the side, they can incorporate into this and see how it turns out. The client projects are a lot different because we do get a brief from the client. Mm -hmm. Uh, the client will say this needs to have a lot of pop colors. It needs to have a lot of action it, or it needs to be subdued. It needs to be subliminal. Um, and that's where they kind of the artists will have to work within the parameters of a certain, you know, obviously creative brief. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the passion projects are wide open. I try to leave it because, you know, it just makes it's they're doing this for fun mm -hmm. and I want it to be fun. So I don't want to restrict them. Okay, is it going to be when when it comes to the client project? Um, are you approaching the client sometimes, is it, or is it yeah. both ways around? So how? a lot of times, you know, during the quarantine, obviously, I'm spending countless hours reaching out to new clients and offering, letting them know who we are and getting on their radar. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever I see a new director post something, I, I try to write to them and say, "Hey, love what you're doing here." Blah blah blah. So you know, I reach out a lot to clients, mm -hmm. um, but. We also have a lot of clients come to us as well. So it's kind of, I would say it's probably 70, 30, 70 coming to us mm -hmm. and 30% me reaching out to people. Okay, that's cool. And how, how much time do you plan in for a project? We try to ask for four weeks. Mm -hmm. However, you know, and you can talk to Tracy about this. We have had oh, Marvel wow. asked for something. Marvel asked for something over a weekend oh, for Captain Marvel. God. And she was, but to, as a, 
pro that she is, she was able, she's like, nope, it's Captain Marvel. I have to. Yeah. And she knocked it out in 48 hours, and they used it the, on Monday. They asked us on Friday. They used it on Monday. That's crazy. That's crazy. And that's, well, that's a challenge, you know. Were, for, they, were, they, since, were they grateful? Oh, God, yeah, they were so grateful. They, you know, they're very grateful. But, you know, she has three kids. She has other jobs lined up throughout the entire year. So she really had to cut out 48 hours where she's just like, that's it. I'm working on this. Mm -hmm. Um, but we try to do four weeks. We find four weeks is a good, gives us enough buffer zone that if the client does want something changed, mm -hmm. it gives our people enough time to come back and make the tweaks that they want. Okay, cool. And um, we talked about the license printing before. And how how would you like the prints if you could choose whatever poster oh. posse print you would like to do? Which which one would it be, and how would you like to come it out? So from our projects. Yeah, whatever. You, ask you pick. Me. You pick. Hmm. I do like the. I would. I would like to offer the Mandalorian stuff up. Okay. And you know, I because th I think the fans really appreciated it. We got so many great comments about it, and people were asking about it. I only wish we could have made those available to the public. Mm. Um. And then I probably would do a normal print run. I would do. I would do a foil print run. Yeah. And then I would do a super uber limit uber. There you go. Mm -hmm. Super uber <laughs> limited metal run because i'm looking at the metal prints and they're just they came out so great cool. um but keep that to like five or less you know yeah, i was um i think mad needle uh did the, the space odyssey one i think he that came out as a, yes. as a print right I, i pulled it up yeah and he did that yeah this is really cool i i just don't have the money right now i'm still waiting on my tax refund so, right so maybe if that comes in i might have to get it if it's still available but uh it's that's it's a really cool poster whole, that's the problem with this whole poster thing because you know there's so many incredible artists out there like we've talked about gabs mm -hmm. uh christopher shy like i would buy i would literally if i had unlimited funds i would just go to yeah. christopher shy and buy every poster he has yeah i, I would do all the like the original greg ruth ones <laughs> <laughs> yes, all all Greg, all Martin Anson. Yeah. Oh you my know, God. It's, all uh, let's stop, tropical. Let's stop dreaming toxic. here. We're gonna we're gonna die. Yeah. I mean, but it it just gets ridiculous because you don't have yeah, enough wall space. Exactly. You know what I mean, like you run out of space, but and you then could, it, you could I have, hate the flat file. But you could have themes. Like do it like a whole yes. like one draw of the flat file. Star Wars, then Marvel, then something yes. else, and then we just gotta do all of that, and then uh, we we're we're golden, and we change it every three months. So we have like yes. four big topics over the year. So we do that. Like we'll change our posters within the house for the season. Like during yeah. the holidays, we'll we'll get, you know, our Laurent Daru, mm -hmm. our Tom Whalens. We'll put up all our Christmas posters. And then Halloween we do. We have, I have some great stuff from Graham Irwin yeah. uh, for Nightmare Before Crit. We'll put up all the yeah. Halloween stuff. So. Mm -hmm. We do rotate it. Sounds you know? good. I mean, I would, I would, uh, I, I try to rotate it since my, since I have too much Star Wars stuff. I have to say. I know. No, no, like, you don't. You never have too much Star Wars yeah, stuff. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying, but um, <laughs> I mean, no. it's, I, I can't rotate. That's the problem. <laughs> well, you know what you could do? You could but, rotate those three posters behind you to my wall, mm -hmm. and I could send you my posters to put up on your wall. Okay, we talk after. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do, okay. Do a trade for half a year. But... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what was the most challenge, challenging project you would say? Ooh. You know, you mentioned. Well, it's it's always the projects where likeness is an issue. Mm -hmm. So certain contracts require that we do not use likeness. Mm -hmm. And it's just because it's it's difficult to get the approvals yeah. from each and every actor. Yeah. Um, some actors are easier than others. Others are a little bit more difficult, and I, I don't behoove them for that. It their, their face is their brand. It's their identity. Mm -hmm. I get it. Um, but I would say the ones where we so because we have such great artists that do amazing likenesses. You know, Rich Davies does incredible. Oh, uh, I he, have a I have a Rich Davies, an untouchable one. Yes. Wait one second. I'll show you something. Five of five. <laughs> yes. Five of five. Like Rich Davies did this David Bowie poster. Oh my God. That looks great. It's got a glare. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's all good. I, did... Yeah, we can see it. It's perfect. But that's likeness. And yeah. 
personally, I think it's incredible. Um, so it, it's tough. I would say the cha biggest challenge is when we can't use likeness because we really want to okay. set our artists loose on it and show their capabilities. But the, the studio knows they like, look, it'll take us forever to get this approved. We just can't do likeness. And I understand. So that that's that's the biggest frustration and challenge. OK, I see. Um, and what kind of IP franchise do you want to work on? Something old, something new, music, sports, the, the food stuff? Well, <laughs> yeah, well, I'd love to work with something on Christopher Nolan, mm -hmm. uh, Jordan Peele. Oh, yeah. He's great. Yeah. Um, Guillermo del Toro. Okay. Uh, and then I'd like to switch it up and throw a – you'd love to do some video game stuff. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. We'd love to do some work for video game companies. Uh, we have okay. done some stuff for Santa Monica Studios for God of War. Okay, that's cool. Well, Dolly did that. You can ask him yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, I know. Yeah, I remember. I, I, I saw that. So we've done some stuff there, but, you know, we'd love to venture more down that rabbit hole and see what we could do for video game stuff. Yeah, I mean, um, speaking of video game stuff, they, the, the Jedi Fallen Order, um, the Mandalorian made a post today. Hey, wouldn't you like to see a Mandalorian game like that? Yep. So maybe that's uh, going to be coming next year. Who knows? And then Yeah, that would be exciting. That's a good chance to get into that. And I think it's smart, you know. I think that this that series has really opened up yeah. the Star Wars universe for, for for Disney and Lucasfilm because it's giving them a whole different venue to go, a rabbit hole to go down. Um, and I, I think that game would do very, very well. I mean, um, the Knights of the Old Republic is my favorite video game of all time. I have to say, mm -hmm. this was the greatest Star Wars game and one of the, one of the favorite, uh, my favorite games. I, I used to play the Old Republic online, like the the Star Wars online yeah. version a lot, um, and Galaxies, which was cool. But Knights of the Old Republic with Revan and all of that, that was, wow, that was just great stuff. You know what I'd like to see Star Wars do? What? I want to see Star Wars do a horror movie. Yeah, they they have that. I I I talked about that with with. Plenty of people. Oh, really? Know. Okay. Yeah, they have the, there is this, um, now it's extended universe and it's legend stuff. And mm -hmm. um, they had, where uh, whereas all the stormtroopers turned to zombies. Oh. That's, oh my God. Okay. I, 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 Red, Red Dawn or something like that. It's called something like that. It was something with red, I think it was in a title. Um, and it, it's a novel. You check it out. It's very good. They have okay. they have an audiobook version if you uh, don't have time to read and just can listen. I like that too. In the car, and it's very good. I really liked it. Okay, I think that would be very. You know, I mean, I think mm -hmm. it's a genre they really don't tap into that much. And yeah. obviously, um, I mean, with, and I think it would do very well for them. Yeah, I, I think so too. The the only problem is that hey, we just do stuff that's uh, PG thirteen. Well, that's the challenge. But I think you know, Deadpool showed people that there's a huge audience that would like to see more, mm -hmm. you know, but they don't mind the vulgarity and the did, violence and the, did you watch the PG 13 version they made? I, I did not. I, I, I can't did, tell. I did not see it, but they, I love the first one so yeah. much that I was like, I don't want to watch a watered down version. And yeah. I understand why they did it. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. yeah, of course. What did you think? I, I didn't watch it either. So I, I wondered, I, I wonder if I should watch it or not. I mean, part of that character's appeal besides it being Ryan Reynolds, is his <laughs> vulgarity and his, his no filter. He has just no filter. Yeah. I you love know? it too. I and mean, it's... I love the comics. I mean, the comics are just great, yeah. you know. Yeah, the same absolutely. the same with the Guardians. I mean, they the, the comics were so funny to me. This is like one of the times when I read it, I, I'm not a guy who laughs out loud a lot. So, but I actually yeah. did that when I was on the train reading on my uh, my tablet, <laughs> this digital comic, I was laughing out loud. Yeah, it was great. Tracking up. Yeah. Uh, but how about how about you want to do something for the for the Red Sox? Oh, my beloved Red Sox! You know they, uh, as the, like everybody else, they're not doing anything this year. But <laughs> I think that's okay. They just traded away their number one player. Yeah. And I don't see them getting too much in return. So I'm all right to take a break. Same thing with my beloved Patriots. You okay. know, Tom Brady is finally leaving after 20 how did years. How do you feel about that? By the way, but I, mean, I didn't like. I was, I was like, yeah, I didn't like it either. But I, the Gronk booth, the Gronk booth was weird, man. I, I didn't like it. That okay, the Gronk booth was very weird. Brady is back. Uh, I mean, Bra Brady is moving, and okay, I'm coming out of retirement. Okay, yeah. why didn't you say? You know, why didn't you um, say you don't want to play for the Patriots anymore? Just say it. 
I know. I mean, look, I understand what Tom's feelings are. I think it's a business, though. At the end of the day, it's a business. Mm -hmm. And if they don't want a quarterback of that age, I understand. Yeah, he was, he was deteriorating he's a little bit. I could say that. You know, I, I was playing fan. Right. I was. I mean, I have to say from the fantasy aspect because I was playing fantasy football a lot, and yeah. he was not a quarterback you want anymore. Yeah. So, you know, I wish him all the best. I'll be absolutely watching his games if they play them this year. Mm -hmm. um, but I got to stick with my Patriots. I understand. I understand. I mean, Bill Belichick. He's going to hire the the janitor and the, the facility manager, and and right, it's going to work. <laughs> So yeah, so we It'll, he'll make it work. He'll do something. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, but but yeah, that would be interesting. I mean, um, I think it was last year when they some artists did like the stadium series, that was very interesting. Yeah, they did a poster on that. I, I, yeah, I would like to see a passion project maybe. Sports would be very cool. You know, Luke. Back to Luke Butlin. Yeah. He just did a um a portrait of Michael Jordan. Oh, for last for dance. That documentary, the oh, last dance. Oh my god, this documentary is so great. Oh my god, I gotta watch it. I it's, you it. have to. The Celtics also. Well, I grew up watching. That's where I grew. That's the era I grew up watching basketball. Mm -hmm. You know, Jordan and Magic Johnson and Larry yeah. Bird. It was insane to watch. Mm -hmm. Probably the best, one of the best basketball players to ever hit the court. Yeah, it's, you know, it's incredible. Um, I was like, you know, the the, the crazy thing was um, when uh, um, I I got into like I, I was like I, I was always playing basketball when I was younger. And uh, I also watched like all the like the the finals, like the the, the second three peat they did and all of that. I yep. watched it. We could watch that in Germany. And I remember like screaming <laughs> in the middle of the night because like four or five in the morning and my mom just came down uh, and I was like, what's going on here? And she didn't understand it. I was like, I was like the, the idiot I am. I was so happy. I was, I was so happy for like the, the, uh, for, for the bowls and I had posters up and I took like a pen and I basically autographed my own posters by myself, <laughs> pretending to be the players because I was so happy with them. <laughs> it's easy to get caught yep. up in. Mrs. Paz tell you whenever one of my teams, whether it's the Patriots, the Red Sox, If any of my teams win, I'm jumping around the house like a lunatic. Yeah, but also since since I was in in Ohio, I was close to Cleveland, and um, yep. I was a year uh, too late basically. Otherwise, I would have played LeBron James in a high school game. Wow! But I was I was a, maybe that's better off that you didn't. Maybe yeah yeah yeah. Uh, but I would take I would take poster me. Come on. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, yeah, and that was like, uh, that was like really crazy. And that was also, um, but I had the chance to watch his uh, first career high game, like 41 points, 11 rebounds and 13 assists yep. or something like against the New Jersey Nets in his rookie season, was, which was also really great. Yeah, he, no, he's a force. I mean, yeah. he's fun to watch, that's for sure. Definitely. Okay, um, the question I always ask, it's going to be a little bit uh, harder for you to answer. Um, okay. But which classical artist would you like to see make a film poster okay let's see here i would have to say salvador dali all right and why and what kind of franchise would he do i think he would pair well with kubrick i think they're both a little left of center you know what i mean yeah, like yeah. i would love to see like 2001 a space odyssey or the shining mm -hmm. i think just the way dally his colors yeah, and I the think, way things i think it'd be very cool I think different eyes, for sure. eyes wide shot and a clockwork orange would work yes. well absolutely both of them i mean anything yeah. any of it i, I think th it would it just great. be a had, great pair i had the chance when i was in uh when i was in london last year with my class in in august um i had the chance because the the Q, uh, uh, Kubrick design uh, exhibition was on at the design museum and they had oh. like parts of a set and everything set up there and like original props and stuff like that and where oh. he was coming from with his concept art it was like oh my god and so, there was a lot of Saul, ba uh, Saul Bass stuff yeah it was really cool and yeah that's uh, great to watch and it was very interesting and then you could see all the space odyssey stuff as well and oh my they had the monkey they had the, mon oh, they had the monkey that. costume oh my god that was great I would love to see that. Yeah, it was a good exhibition. I, I enjoyed that a lot. Okay, uh, we talked a lot, but we're almost done here. But uh, okay. before we go, I want you to ask what would you like? What kind of tips would you give some beginners? I mean, you're very oh. um, present on the social media uh, sites, but I yeah. mean, you're not an artist, so you can't. We can't talk about the latest Wacom tablet. 
So um, <laughs> let's stick to social media. What would you or, or kind of what would you give uh, tips for those artists out there? I would say, you know, like I told you earlier, opportunity is everywhere. So I think that the more avenues you explore, the better off you are. So learn about Instagram, learn about Twitter, utilize Behance, mm -hmm. and then just start networking. I think the more you network, you know, and it's more than just liking a post. It's more than just putting a heart or whatever. You mm -hmm. gotta, you should comment. You should say, if you really like something, rather than just like it, tell them why you like it. I love the way you hid the faces in the lollipop, Eileen. This is great stuff for Lolita. <laughs> um, Andy Fairhurst, I love your nerd's eye view perspective because it's a different way of looking at a scene we've seen a million times from the front, but now you're showing us from, you know what I mean? Just comment and, and start try to start conversations. By, by the way, speaking uh, of Andy, um, you tried to get him on last night. I saw that. I, I rewatched it uh, today and uh, he's still not getting on. But he was on this uh, a short documentary by Julia Hendricks or uh, uh, Emily Hendricks. He was on there. Yep. He was on there begrudgingly. Trust me, he's very shy. <laughs> yeah. I know, um, I know, I know. We talked, we talked about it. I wanted to get him on here, but he said, "Yeah, maybe, maybe I should use it as an opportunity to get over." That, that's what he said. That's, those were his words. Okay. So, finger, fingers Let's crossed. Just maybe. Put it this way, I've been after him for a couple of years yeah. now. If he does yours before he does mine, um, that's it. He's out of the posse. <laughs> Goodbye, Andy. Okay. I hope he sees you heard this too. It, you heard it first, Andy. Watch it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tag you. Andy. Watching you, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, and it's, it's a, you know what though? It's not everybody's thing. You know, yeah. um, I'm fine with Andy not doing it. Mm -hmm. I don't want him, to, I don't want to make him uncomfortable. Yeah, and, and the more you do it though, the easier it gets. Mm -hmm. Like I, I didn't used to like doing this, but now it's just, it's, if it's just a conversation like we're having, mm -hmm. it's fine. It's, there's no, there's no, um, pressure yeah. for me to do think, it now so I, I think at the beginning it was kind of weird for me as well because i started doing out like with like music interviews like with artists and stuff yeah. like that and um there was like when i came back from the states uh, the first time in i think 2004 or so i started that and uh, i switched to movies like four or five years ago and um since I'm a teacher as well, that, that it's kind of easy to, to talk to other people because like I I'm always yeah. like every day I'm in this situation yep. where I have to talk anyway. So I get it. So now I try to make maybe a living off it from so, some some point. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's a that's a yeah. As you said, like doing it a lot, it makes it way easier. Yeah, but he you know what? So he's not comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. I tease him a lot about it, but in all honesty. I don't want to make him do it. He'll yeah. do it when he's ready. Exactly. If he does yours first, that's fine. Uh, you win. I get it. But, you know. Maybe we, um, are we going to Skype call you in and then we can do it Ooh, together. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be excellent. Yeah. All right. Okay. So Andy now has more, a little bit more pressure. We both want to do it. <laughs> he's probably going to start blowing up my email here in a minute. What are you doing? <laughs> okay. Um, last thing. Uh, people can yeah. find you on uh, posterposse.com, obviously. and um, That's our website. That's the website, Poster Posse, on Instagram, on Twitter, on uh, where else are you on? Your Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. So for Instagram, it's the Poster Posse. Mm -hmm. And it's two S's in Posse. Mm -hmm. um, we have a Behance page, which needs to be updated. And that's the next 48 hours for me is updating okay. our Behance page. Uh, but Twitter, Facebook... Um, yeah, we're, we're pretty much on all those platforms. Um, our official website will show you our official work we've done for clients as well as our passion projects, mm -hmm. which are really, um, cool. it also have, yep. Thank you. It's also has a way to get in contact with us There's a contact tab. So if someone has a project that they would like art for, whether it's an indie film, a book cover, mm -hmm. an album mm -hmm. cover, they don't make albums anymore, but a tour poster, anything like that. Uh, you know, we have over 55 artists worldwide with diverse styles. Um, so yeah, that, that's the best way to get a hold of us. If you're an artist that wants us to look at your work, we'd love to do that. We love looking at new artists work. Um, whatever it is, those are the sites. To, that's the way to get a hold of us though. Sounds perfect. And what kind of artist, uh, or who do you want to give a shout out? Oh, well, first of all, I need to thank the poster posse members, you know, for the last seven years, they've been on this ride with us. Mm -hmm. can, um, can you say, can you say that the founding members? Because that, that's one of the questions the I did The eight ask. members aren't really, there's, there's, so Tracy Ching was the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris Garofalo, mm -hmm. 
QFS Chris on Instagram. He was in there. Uh, Marco Manev. Oh yeah, that's right, Marco. You should. He'd be good to get yeah, on here. I, I, we talk. We talked already. We, he's he's. Okay. Look at you. You're way ahead yeah, of. Yeah. He's, he's gonna. He, we're gonna do. Um. He's gonna do some cool project. I heard, but he he, he couldn't say what. But he said I would love it. I guess. Yeah. He's got all. You know. He's very talented, and he's uh. He's a very busy artist. He's yeah. one of those guys like Tracy, mm -hmm. like Orlando, like Ferguson. They're just constantly busy. So finding time is kind of tough for these guys. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I mean, all those, you know, we there's some original members that aren't in the group anymore. Mm -hmm. um, Does it happen because of time up. or is, did something happen? No. So I never take any umbrage with anybody leaving. Mm -hmm. People have left for their own reasons, whether they okay. want to pursue something different, whether they want to try something different. It's all, it's all good. Okay. If I, if while they were with us, we provided them any opportunities or gave them any help, mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. You know, that's, that's, that's all good. Um, obviously when we sign somebody up to be a part of the group, mm. it's because we love them and their work. Mm. So that, that hurts when they leave for, because we don't have that anymore. We don't have that camaraderie or get to see their work anymore. But well, it, but, um, but there may be there may be honorary poster posse pros. Yeah, there you go. See, see. So um, yeah, but no, the poster posse guys have, and girls have all been very, very uh, helpful in helping us get to where we are today. Mm -hmm. uh, they mm -hmm. all contribute uh, in their own ways, and um, it's very, very, very appreciated. Uh, the right hand and I, Mrs. Posse and I, um, lean on them quite a bit. Uh, we not only, I mean, we're providing them opportunities, but they're also helping us with questions and, and ideas and different creative things. Um, so I'd have to start with them. I really need to give a shout out to Mrs. Posse though. Uh, when I started this thing by myself, it was just me and I was doing everything. I was doing social media. I was mm -hmm. doing meetings with clients. I was driving to gallery shows. I would, all of it. Yeah. And Mrs. Posse came on a couple of years back and has really helped us turn the corner and go to the next level. So uh, she handles mm -hmm. all our contracts. She does a lot of our meeting requests and, and takes care of our meetings. Um, she does all the payments to the artists, which is, you know, when a project's a big project, say 20 posters or so, it's a lot of moving parts. Mm -hmm. uh, she keeps the artists on project manager. So yeah. she keeps everybody on date. You know, if a project's four weeks, she goes, look, you need to have your whips here. She sets up the calendars for everybody. Okay. She's been could, instrumental could, could you, in making us work. Could you say a little bit, she is uh, the all the organs and you're the body? Like the outside. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. I'm just. Uh, the pretty face. face. The pretty face. <laughs> I didn't even go that far. I was gonna say that, but that's so not true. I am more the social media voice of uh -huh. social media and the voice of the posse, where um, she's really in the in the trenches, okay. grinding out a lot of uh, contracts and all the heavy lifting. Yeah, there you go. She was from her lips to your ears. She, I'm more of the visionary. Okay. She's the uh, the real enabler. the realizer. Yes, yes. There we go. Okay. Uh, those are the, I mean, and then again, all our fans. You know, we've we've amassed a nice following of fans, and they're all so great. Uh, it's mm -hmm. great getting to hear their comments on all our projects. Um, it's nice that they follow us. It's nice that they tune in when we do when we do our Instagram live. Yep. Um. It's nice interacting with these people because they have the same passions as we yeah, do. It's always fun. And it's nice to turn in with them. Yeah, it's always, it's always fun, fun turning I mean, into you guys. I like it a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time again and stopping by, Don, and especially Rebecca in the back. So uh, shout out to Rebecca on this case. The voice. <laughs> and um, tune in to our next episode when we talk to Dolly. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast and to our IG page at DropMac Official, where you can find all the art that we talked about. And leave us some comments, shout outs, or topics and questions you want to answer by artists in the future and on our next shows. Bye.